This video is about properly reading from TCP WebSockets, but if you want to know how a web server works on a very basic level, you will also find this interesting because in order to show you the, all the problems that come with, from reading from TCP WebSockets, I decided to write a very simple server that can serve files and also have the possibility to upload files. Basically, a uh, server from the 90s. Uh, but uh, the idea is that uh, those TCP streams are very tricky because, they, because of their asynchronous nature. So I hope you find this interesting. Uh, also keep in mind that if uh, the, the same logic applies for other types of data, in this case, I'm showing it with the, H the HTTP protocol, but whatever else, whatever protocol you have on hand, the methodology should be exactly the same. And to show you exactly what we're going to achieve in this video, you can see this uh, HTML that I wrote. It, this thing should be served when we uh, write here the URL to our custom web server slash index.html. It should return this. And then here we will be able to select some sort of file uh, and click upload and the file will be uploaded in base64 format. So clicking upload uh, obviously, it says error, but uh, we should implement that. Um, and you can see the payload. Uh, here's the file in base64. Here's, here's the file name. And then when we click that, and when we come here and say uh, and say that, it should uh, return back our uh, requested file. So this is the. Uh, general idea everything will be written from ground from the ground up basically from reading the tcp websocket without any servers and any sort of helpers whatsoever before we jump into the code i just quickly want to go through the structure of the http request and response uh, so that uh, we are on the same page here uh, so here is an example http uh, request so as you can see uh, it's simple text. Basically, HTTP is just text that is being transmitted over uh, TCP or actually it can be transmitted over even a file, but usually web browsers work with uh, TCP sockets. Anyways, uh, here we have uh, the first line, which is the method followed by space, then by the URL, followed by space, then the version of the HTTP protocol, and then a new line. Uh, this new line usually is CRLF, if I'm not mistaken, or in other words, uh, slash R and slash N. Some servers return just slash N, but our server will expect uh, this kind of new line. Then the following lines are all again separated by a new line and uh, they are all headers. So you have your host, connection, the length of the uh, body and so on and so forth until we reach the this line, which is just a new line, basically empty line. Um, this indicates the end of the metadata, basically headers and uh, the first line and the beginning of the body. Now, usually uh, some methods, for example, get don't have body, but this is actually, uh, it's still possible to send a body. Anyways, uh, the body is, uh, again, it can be whatever we want. It can be uh, basic uh, whatever strings, like separated with comma and stuff like that. It can be JSON. It can, be, it can even be multi-part. Multi uh, in our case, we're going to send it, uh, the bodies in JSON because it's the easiest to process and understand and stuff like that. So. Uh, that's how uh, example uh, request looks like. Um, also, check out this page. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, here, it's pretty much the same thing uh, that I described with uh, a little more details. You can also check the. Uh, you can also check examples for HTTP request uh, and response here in that page. So, uh, if you're interested, again, check it out. So yeah, here's the one for the response. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's jump into the code. So while editing, I just realized I forgot to walk you through the initial skeleton. So here it is, no changes have been 
made. Um, so let's start with the POM XML file. It's pretty empty except for this JSON that data bind. Uh, I said I wasn't gonna use any third party libraries, but I don't wanna write a library for parsing JSON, so I added this. Uh, here are some uh, resources. I have the index, HTML file. This is basically the form for uh, uploading files. Uh, nothing interesting here. Here's a picture. Uh, here is a startup class, it's empty. Here are constants. Uh, this is for uh, access to the resources uh, folder. And this file utils, which uh, it's simply just a utility class for reading from and writing to files in this resources folder. First step is to create a server that basically something that listens for connections coming from the browser or everything that wants to connect to our server so in java this this is a class called uh, server socket so create that server socket equals new server socket um it has a handled exception i'm just gonna say throws exception uh keep in mind that this video is not quality code oriented, so uh, I just want to avoid boilerplate code. So that's why I'm adding uh, throws exception here. Uh, and uh, here we need to specify a socket. So let me just say int, uh, uh, not socket, I'm sorry, port. So int port and let's give it a port 80, for example. Uh, add the port here and then right after that let's print uh, string format start listening listening on ports and the port like that now we should uh, add our while loop so i'm just gonna say while true and here we can call server socket uh accept and this returns a socket, and this socket is basically the client. I'm gonna make that final. And uh, basically what happens here, when you call the accept method, the whole thread freezes until uh, someone opens a connection, someone uh, reaches our backend. So this may be uh, the browser, can be Postman or whatever else. Um, when that happens, the application uh, will get that socket and, you, and it will continue until the request has been uh, processed and then to listen for a new one again and again until the end of time, basically. So let's just, for now, let's just print, uh, we got new client, something like that. And uh, let's start the application. Right, so it's listening on port 80. So this would mean if I go and say localhost and go back here, we got new client. Okay, and as you can see, this is spinning it. It will spin forever because uh, we haven't closed the connection there. Uh, sorry, localhost. So yeah, as you can see, it says pending here. Right, uh, so trying to open localhost on, let's say, port 8080, as you can see, uh, it will result in connection refuse. That's because nothing is listening on port 80. Let's change that. Let's change this port 80 to port 8080. Let's start again. And it already, uh, the browser hooked up, so as you can see now, oh, sorry, now it's again spinning forever. Uh, so now that we have this, uh, I guess, figured out, the next step is to try and understand what the browser is uh, sending us and then uh, figure out what we should send it back. But uh, we shouldn't be doing that on the same thread. So let's delete, uh, let's say, and get input stream, save that, and uh, 
find get output stream and also save that. Uh, I'm gonna make them final. And input stream is basically what the browser is sending us and output stream is what we're gonna send to the browser. And as I said, we don't want to do it in the same thread. So I'm just gonna say new thread and I'm gonna pass the runnable as a lambda here so that we don't create other methods. I'm just gonna start the thread. Here is where we can read and write from those uh, streams. The reason we can't do it from the same thread is because sometimes uh, reading and writing and processing the request may take seconds or even a minute. And uh, during that time, we want to serve other clients. So basically uh, this server socket is can only uh, listen on one thread and can only process one socket at a time. So because of that, uh, what we can do is uh, every time we get a new connection, just pass that connection to a different thread. This can be a thread pool or anything. For that case, I'm just spawning a, a new thread here. But anyway, uh, and then once uh, the client has been passed to a new thread, the server is free to accept more connections. You can test that by yourself by uh, saying like thread sleep and at the same time opening a new connection and stuff like that and you'll see that the server is actually asynchronous. Anyways, now to read uh, this input stream, uh, we're not gonna use any scanners or buffer readers, we're actually gonna read it by ourselves. Uh, and I'm just gonna say here, uh, byte array output stream and i'm just gonna say that uh, request uh, yeah i'm just gonna say that request for now uh, and the reason why i'm doing that is i want to read that stream and just save it somewhere um now this is not the best way to do it Actually, it's a very bad way because we are working here with a very small application, but it, if it was a real server, I don't want that because this is uh, very memory intensive. We don't want to duplicate basically the stream into memory, but for the sake of example, this is a uh, very, very intuitive. So uh, I'm just gonna create another method here, public static void. And I'm just gonna call this one transfer. So input stream to output stream like that. Uh, let's create our buffer here. Let's uh, make it to kilobytes. And uh, now let's say while the input stream uh while the input stream is available so while it has data to uh, read let me just throw io exception here actually i'm gonna change that just a little bit here uh let's say i'm just gonna add here int red that All right, read and then pass the buffer, the offset uh, and the length. And the length is gonna be uh, the lowest of input stream available and 2048, which is the size of our, uh, our buffer. And while this thing is greater than zero. So read, uh, can be minus one if um, this didn't read any data so that's why we do it like that all right and here we can say output stream write write the buffer uh, the offset is zero and the length is uh, whatever we read so here's how we transfer the uh, stream so 
here I can say transfer the input stream to the request and of course it throws exceptions so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna say global try catch uh, like that and I'm just gonna print the stack trace <laughs> don't do that at home <laughs> all right uh, so that means that here we have the parse data so I just want to print that that's why I'm gonna say new uh, string request oh so the request has to already has to string that's what uh, I didn't know that I'm just gonna say to string or I'm not sure if that's gonna work though but let's let's see all right let's hit it okay so it's not really frozen it's just that uh the previous uh connection wasn't closed uh sorry about that uh basically what we need to do here is when we try that we should add final finally close here and say client close again there are some exceptions around with try catch print stack trace like that uh yeah if we if we don't if you don't close the connection the browser will spin forever okay let's run again and let's see what we get here so as you can see it's not spinning and we are getting uh the requests and now the next step is to parse them and uh, make sense of all this information so uh, i'm just gonna go here and uh, write a method for that so public static uh, I'll create a class for that uh, parse uh, metadata uh, basically here is uh, we're gonna read the first line and the headers without the body um, so input stream uh, let's get Let's call it data here and uh, let's create a class for that. So static class HTTP request. Um, so we'll have private final string status, private final. Uh, not status, sorry, method. We'll have URL and we'll have uh, a map string and string, which is going to be our headers. Okay. Uh, like that. And let me add a bunch of getters too. Okay, so here we're going to run HTTP request, right, and we are going to call this here, so HTTP request equals uh, parse metadata, and here I'm just going to say new byte array input stream of uh, the the data that we just stored in the byte array that's very bad i mean that that's duplicating the data all, over and over again but as i said we don't really care about performance here the right way is usually to read it by chunks and as you read it to parse it that way you won't have to store and cache anything but it's not a problem for our small application here anyway uh now that uh, we have this we can even say buffered reader here uh, reader equals new buffer reader new input stream reader and give it the data um string line Like 
so so while we have a line uh we can store that but actually what i forgot is that we should be reading the first line uh separately or actually yeah let's read it separately um so buffer reader line um and like that and this is the header line so if the header line uh is empty basically this means that we reach the end of the uh header uh header so if we if we go back here as you see the last um header is this cookie header and it ends up with new line and the next line is just an empty line so uh if you go back here uh this this is what the check is looking for if it's an empty line just uh uh break otherwise we can uh create the header out of that but for that let me say final map Like that to store the header somewhere um so string the header key it will be header line split by i think it should be like that and take the first and then the value should be taking the second one all right and headers put the value and with that we have the headers as well uh, now the first line here um, we need to specify the methods so the method uh, is the first line split by space and the first element and then the URL is the second element again if you see it the method is the first and the URL is the second all right, now let's return our uh, HTTP request here. So we have the method, the URL, and the headers, just like that. Um, and just let me quickly uh, put that into the breakpoint and see what exactly we got here to make sure we're properly parsing it. So. The method is get, the URL is just a slash, and as you can see, the headers are properly parsed. So this is all good. Now we can proceed with the second part, which is serving actual uh, files. And to serve files over our uh, server, we need uh, two uh, response headers that are necessary for the browser then to understand the response. So here is an example of my avatar and here's uh, the response headers. There are quite a few of them, but two are uh, the ones that we're looking for. The one is content uh, length and the other one is content type. The content length is the length of the response, not the whole response, but just the body of the response. And the content type is the type of that uh, data that's is being returned so in that case it's a uh, image slash jpeg so why when we are serving files we need to make sure that they have those uh, headers otherwise the browser might be confused now because it's a simple server we're gonna make things really simple so i'm just gonna make a switch here uh and i'm just gonna switch the method or not method but get method and i'm just gonna say case get and case post here i'm just gonna say to do implement and get we're gonna implement now basically get will me will, uh, would mean give me a file and post would mean here you, here's a file save it somewhere so let's start with get uh, i'm just gonna create a new method here uh public static uh void uh 
and I'm just gonna call it Pendle post the request. I'm just gonna get the request, and I want also the output string. And this should probably throw IO exception. Right, so here we are just gonna say Pendle not post i'm sorry <laughs> can they get can they get request uh we're gonna say HTTP request and also the output stream uh which is directly sending the data to the client so here the file name that we're looking for is basically the request url so string file name equals request get url uh, and actually not quite because uh, we have also this uploaded and web apps folder uh, folder when we upload the file we're gonna save it here when we uh, when we wo when we want the file we're gonna we're gonna have to check both in here and here because those are files that belong to the server so we are going to do something like that. If five utils exists, and I'm just gonna say web app plus uh, file name, then file name is gonna be equal web app plus file name. Uh, else if five utils exists um for it was file name so in that case the file name is going to be equal to upload it and finally uh here we just gotta say not found because if the file doesn't exist in those two directories well the file doesn't exist so we're just throwing something to the client to let him know that uh something went wrong so the first line of the http response is similar to the request it's a bit different than the rest so uh actually here i don't even need any header so i can just do it in all of one line so uh i can say the http 1.1 1 .1, uh 404 not found and then new line and then the empty line uh because i'm not adding any header so i'm just quickly skipping to the empty line and then i'm just gonna say h1 uh file not found like that uh in any other case uh we're just gonna try with ring builder here all right so string builder append http by the way i'm not sure if i have to write it like that but <laughs> i guess we'll see 200 okay and then new line then uh, we need to append the content type so as we append and then I have to say string format content type and the content type is file use pro content type file name and I forgot the new line. This uh, I think I already showed you, but basically checks the file extension and based on that, it gets the content type. Uh, usually there's a better way. Uh, there are libraries that will actually scan your actual file and give you the content type, but uh, we don't need that uh, for this server. So this is fine. Uh, and then we can say, Uh, I'll try input stream file stream equals uh, 
file tools, get the stream from the file name. And here we can append the content length. So length. It's gonna be a number and it's gonna be the available uh data from that uh file stream. Uh basically available available returns the number of bytes and the content length. Uh, length expects exactly the number of bytes so this is all fine actually i didn't have to do that uh i'll explain why we don't have to use that trial to resources exactly here yeah so now that we have the file stream we need to start uh writing to the output stream so we have to follow that structure we can start writing the file first and then add the headers so we need to start with the headers so output stream write ESBL or let's say response metadata string get bytes. The only thing that I didn't actually do is I had to do append one more new line. And this is the line separating the header from the body. So now that we have uh, written this, we can say try file stream and then uh, file stream transfer to the output stream just like that and in theory this should work I'm not sure about few things but uh, <laughs> let's try it and let's see what happened so localhost 8080 slash something we we'll get file not found and if we check the network tab, we should be getting 404 here. Let's try with index.html. And as you can see, it's loading the file properly. We have one other file here. It's called rolls.png. All right, so. Oh, it's a JPG. I'm sorry. It's a JPG. Yeah. It's loading that too, and we can even combine that. Uh, let's go to the index file, and uh, I have this line. Let me just uncomment it. Let's restart the. Oh, we have a no pointer. Yeah, that's not not a big deal. All right, uh, let's try again. Index.html, and as you can see, the index file loaded and then the rows file loaded and it it's showing here so with that being said the serving of file functionality is is completed and now we have to implement the uploading now for the upload it should be pretty simple we just need to uh read the rest of the request the body and then convert it into json and from there get the file name and the file content uh, but uh, let's see if if it will be that easy so let's create a new method here, handle, uh, handle post request. Yeah, I'm not sure if we need this HTTP request even, but yeah, let's send it. Let's send the output stream and let's send a new byte array. Input stream request to byte array. Just like that. Basically, we need another copy of that. Again, not good, but <laughs> it's not a problem for our case. Okay, let me just quickly duplicate this handle post request. Uh, this like that and throw IO exception. Right, so we aren't going. We're not going to do any validation. We're just going to assume that the payload is valid. So first thing that we need to do is we need to read the body, not the whole request. So the, the dirtiest way and the quickest way to do that is quickly just copy that. Come here like so. Okay. And now we need to remove a bunch of things now. I don't need that and i don't need that 
Okay, so basically we're reading and not doing anything with that. Just to get over the requests and anti one and stuff like that. So the rest of the data that is left um, is going to be strictly for the body. So we read the anti line. That means everything that will read below that is a part of our request body. So we're going to say now buffer reader. We have a method called lines. I'm just going to use that and we're just going to collect it joining by joining by a new line. Basically what we, what happens is uh, the lines basically uh, reads all the lines and then we're joining them back by new line just to preserve the original state of the payload. Uh, here we're going to create object mapper like that. Also pro tip if you use object mapper don't create it every time just use a singleton. Anyway, uh, object mapper read value and we're going to read the body and we're going to save it to let's create a class for that. So static class uh, file DTO, let's call that. Uh, so private string file name and private string file. We'll create getters and setters like that. Plus. And then we're going to say file utils, say file, get file name and file get file. And basically what this thing does, it uh, converts the base64 into an output stream uh, and saves the file in this uploaded directory. No, it will upload it here, not in uploaded. So um, let me just quickly change that. Like that. All right. And here, let's just write something like HTTP one on one, two hundred and one. Created new wine, new wine. File was created. Get bytes. All right. Uh, yeah, no idea if that's gonna work. Let's run it and let's see what happens. Okay, I'm starting with a simple text file. So I'm choosing that. Let me just see the network and I click upload. File was uploaded. Okay, that's nice. Uh, let's see though what happens. If we go to the uh, compile output. Uh, let's open that in the explorer. Okay, I fixed it. It was my mistake from this uh, file queues. Uh, I was using the wrong uh, directory. So, uh, yeah, now it's working. So let's go through it again. Uh, I'm just going to restart the server. I'm going to delete this target folder. So let's go with the test.txt, upload it. It says it's uploaded. So uh, test.txt. And uh, this is the content of the text file. Now it's time for the real test. So I've opened the website, but not from localhost, uh, but the public domain. So we can get some uh, delay between the calls. The website still votes properly. But let's try and up update something. So I'll choose this image. Click upload. And you can see there was an error. And when we check the logs, you can see that uh, it, the error is coming from Jackson, basically saying that it couldn't parse the JSON. But I check out the payload, and as you can see, it's for me it looks like a valid JSON file. Uh, so let's quickly show you what happened. So I'll print uh, body length here, and I'll go here in the index file. And I'll print not the base, but the not the base64 file, but the length of the file. So 
let's refresh all right so uploading again so you can see that is close to 200,000 so let's see what the uh, server read uh, server read 13 only <laughs> 13,000 so that's not good and this is the actual problem that we have to fix here so the way that uh, TCP socket works uh, it's not like your file input stream where when you uh, call the dot available uh, method it uh, gives you the remaining uh, bytes just like we did uh, right here nope when you call dot available on a, a tcp socket stream it will give you an available number but uh it's not uh final basically it it here, right now there might be like 20 characters available and after two seconds there, there may be uh, like two megabytes more but there's no way to know and this is for every tcp socket so how do we fix that well uh every protocol that is being transferred over tcp has to some in a way uh provide the length of the content so for uh http this is um content length header so go back here and uh, check this as you can see we have this content length 198 118 basically this header should be utilized by our, by our application uh, so that we uh, read it read the headers until we reach that point and when we get the content length just get the value and uh, from there we will know exactly uh, how much to read from the body uh, so if you're working with any other uh, protocol over TCP socket you must have something uh, that defines the length usually uh, for HTTP it's some it's a header and it's not the first one but uh, if you're running your own protocol make sure the length of the data is the first thing that uh, is read from the socket so that you make you make sure that after that uh, you know exactly how much to read so with that being said, let's change our application uh, and let's uh, modify it so that uh, this thing uh, is kept in mind and we read exactly as much data as we need. First thing, we're getting rid of this method uh, and this is because here you can see that we are expecting, uh, like we're relying on available first and then uh, we basically have no idea how much to read. I mean, if it's not available, we have no idea uh, what happens here is that this read uh, read uh, value returns zero or minus one while there are still more data to come but uh, our pc doesn't know yet and basically we exit this while loop and uh, the rest of the data gets uh, uh, is left behind unread, uh, unread so we don't need that uh, here it is here so we are going to modify this uh oops, sorry we're going to modify this parse metadata metadata to do the reading for us as well i'm going to replace this byte array here with the real input stream so let's go here and now buffer reader is not a friend of uh the socket or the tcp socket stream so we have to get rid of that. Uh, for now, I'm just going to comment that. I'll just keep it just so, so I don't forget anything. All right. So, this is a string. And I'm just going to call this metadata lines. What was new already? Something like that. And I'm going to make everything final here. Um, this is the line builder uh i'll explain why we need this uh, 
we need int red or actually int byte uh, or b byte is uh, forbidden and uh, and a boolean to track the if the last one byte red was a new line so let's call this was new line it can be false i guess i'm not sure about that let's start with a while here so byte is going to be equal to the data read and while this is greater than zero we'll continue reading first thing we need to check is if the byte is equal to n or not n but r else we'll say line builder and we'll cast it to char and save it like that and uh, here we can say was new wine equals post because it's the last thing was not a new wine. All right, so here, uh, if we read R, then we should read uh, the next one. So int next equals data read. And now if the next one equals new or n uh, then we just read the new line so was new line equals true or before that we should check if was new line in that case we should break and uh, to explain this if the previous time was what well, basically if we have uh, let's see if you have this case where this one will be red and the was new wine will be marked as true and then this will be red and if the was new uh, wine mark is still uh, true that means that we reach this empty wine and we should stop reading the metadata metadata here we should say metadata wines add line builder string and we should also say line builder apparently it's set length zero so that's that's how we clean this and uh all right so now what we have is these metadata metadata lines that we sh should have hopefully uh written them correctly unless i uh messed something but <laughs> we'll see at runtime uh now we need to parse them into the http request so Let's start uncommenting here. Uh, I don't need this buffer to reader anymore. So the first line is basically metadata lines get zero. The method and the URL are then uh, gotten from this A header line. All right, let's spin a loop from one to metadata line. Okay, like that. So we're basically gonna skip the first line and continue uh, with the other metadata lines, which are the headers. So header line will be equal to metadata line at position i, and from there, I think we can just copy and paste that. Now let's go back. Now we have this request here. And uh, this request actually, we don't need that anymore. So I'm just gonna remove it. And you can see, uh, even when we do this refactoring, we're gonna improve the <coughs> memory a little bit as well by removing that. And uh, here I'm just gonna pass the original input stream for the post. Let's go here. And now what's left in this input stream is basically uh, just the body. Everything else was read. So now we only need to read the body. So here's our, here's our string body. Basically, I'll need to remove e everything before that. Uh, just like that. First, uh, I just want to get the content uh, length. So 
I'll just call it remaining actually. So integer parse int uh, requests get headers get um, content length like that, and this is assuming the browser has set has sent content content length because they can uh, no they can leave it that. I mean, if you are writing your own uh, client, but it's a good practice to send it because uh, even other servers very very much rely on the content length header. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah. So remaining is this, uh, and now well, I'll, I'll use the byte array output stream again. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, let's call it just output stream like that. Uh, and now I'm just gonna say the buffer is gonna be big two kilobytes I think is enough while remaining is greater than zero and this time as you can see we have uh, the real data so uh, we're not just uh, leaning on the input streams dot available we actually know what to expect this time so it's going to be uh, much easier. So int red will be uh, ooh, sorry input stream read the buffer and map min of remaining and uh, the size of the buffer, just like that. Okay. And now we're gonna say upstream writes buffer, the offset is zero and the length is red. Um, and we're gonna say remaining minus minus red. Uh, minus equals red. So basically whatever we read, we're gonna subtract it from the remaining until there's no remaining left. At which point we're gonna exit this. Now the body is gonna be the output stream string. Okay. Uh, and I'm just gonna try to run this and see if it works. I might be missing something, but we'll see. Okay. Let's uh, choose something. Let's choose this image. Okay, there's still an error. Uh, let's see. 90, okay, almost 200,000. Let's see here. Zero, okay. <laughs> Just uh, a quick lesson on how to name your variables. Uh, don't name them like that because, <laughs> as you can see, I was writing to the client, which was very, very stupid. Okay. Just call it client OS um, and just don't use it there. Okay, so client OS should be only used here at the bottom. Let's try again. Try it out. File supported. Let's try and access it. And yeah, this is for from a few years ago when I had 100 subscribers. Thank you guys. <laughs> Let's try with something bigger to see if it's gonna happen. Um, uh, just a second here. I had a folder files. So yeah, this video is uh, five megabytes. Let's try and upload it. I will support it. And you can see it took a bit and also you can check I added this uh, walk here from the remain remaining and as you can see it's been coming down and down and down and down until it read it, all of them and uh, we should have it yeah anyway this is the way uh, you properly uh, read data from TCP sockets, you uh, 
as, as a part of your data, you specify the length of the data so that uh, whoever's reading it uh, knows uh, what to expect. The same uh, thing is that uh, the same thing applies for the browsers. The browser, uh, when we're passing a bigger file, we should be saying uh, specifying the content length so that the browser knows exactly what to expect uh, for you to serve it. Otherwise, the browser is probably gonna, going to read until there's like five seconds of no data, which will dramatically slow the speed of your application. So yeah, uh, that's it guys. I uh, hope you find this uh, entertaining and helpful. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in more of uh, like uh, similar things like that, you can check out my uh, repositories on GitHub where I have many other things uh, related to servers. Uh, for example, this one, Java Web Server, basically this is a, a replica of the real uh, Tomcat web server and not only that, uh, you can see that I have like other replicas of Catalina, Coyote, uh HTTP API uh and even I even have uh, a replica of uh, Spring Framework so everything is written uh everything has started from basically uh this listening for uh, so uh, for a client then reading uh this re those requests parsing them into a proper HTTP and passing them to a custom made uh framework and so on and so forth. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe if you're interested and hopefully I'll see you next time.